Welcome back, everyone, to Nanolids of Dawn. I'm your host, Dominic, and we have a match between Sack Roger and Hebrodol Red on Eye of Horus, two players I've not seen before, but who seem to be reasonably good at the game. And I... The... What? The... Not sure why that was on, but let's go! Anyway, Zack Roger going for the tank factory, while Hebrol Red is going for the spider factory, and I should point out that the tanks have been slightly nerfed. Very slightly. Blitzes are a little bit slower, or a little bit... No, shorter range, I think it was. Yeah, it's... It, there have been very minor nerfs to the tank factory. No, blitzes do less damage, that's what it was. Yeah, because they wanted to make sure that glaives could fight them, and their range is all slightly shorter... So, it's a little, it's a small change, but Blitz was basically the ma the factory. That was the factory. That was it. You built a factory for Blitzes. And not much else. So, I can't say it's a major surprise that they were nerfed. And they weren't really nerfed that much. They just can't one-shot Glaives anymore. And their range is shorter. They're still going to be quite scary. But hey, I mean, it's always just a matter of little tweaks here and there just to find the sweet spot. Anyway, a couple of is coming in for Sack Roger. No Blitzes yet. Hebrol Red, on the other hand, is just building up some fleas for scouting, getting the Weavers, getting a lot of defenses, and honestly, the start location, I'm not super confident in. Starting in the top left corner on Eye of Horus is really dangerous because you can't easily expand out of it. Where Sack Roger has started is a little bit riskier because you have three different paths, or I guess two, roughly, different paths into your base. Like, this top section is wide open. There's three paths into that. There's another path in the back. Actually, there's a path on the side if you have spiders or bots that you're fighting. So there are a lot of ways into the center area, but the thing is, if you can maintain control over the center, it's a lot easier to expand out of the north or the east and west than it is if you start in one of the corners. It's harder to be attacked in one of the corners, but it's way harder to get out of the corner. So Sack Roger's going to have an easier time economically going forward, while Hellbrawl Red is just going to be... They're going to be struggling to get an economy outside of the first four metal extractors. Especially with the Kodachis here, maintaining a bit of a contain on this. I mean, there's one right out here that has to be pushed past. And the other one is just making these Weavers' lives miserable. The Commander can't do anything about it just because the Kodachis are way too fast, and there aren't the defenses in place to stop them. On the other hand, the Fleas cannot get in. Sack Roger, just one Lotus, just stops the Fleas, because that's what Lotuses do. Although, to be fair, this Flea could actually go over to the factory and start pinging at it. It would take a little while, but they deal decent DPS. So, you know, 45 DPS, that would take... It would only take a minute and a half. It would eventually kill it. The commander would probably come in and start, you know, killing the flea first, but... Eh, you know, get three or four fleas in the factory. It actually wouldn't be too long before it dies. It'd be like ten seconds. But, nope, not gonna happen. And now the defense is up. It's not a, it's a moot point. Still, though, Heberol Red now in a very tough position because they can't really build up that easily. Also going for the mass flea strategy we saw last time, but not likely to have as much of an effect because Sack Roger is doing a much better job building up defenses and building up their army to actually deal with fleas should they come up. Not to mention Kodachi's splash damage is just going to incinerate all the fleas. As we see right now, there it is. That's all the fleas going down. That's what happens when Kodachi fights fleas. All the fleas die to one shot. As if the glaive wasn't raider enough. The Kodachis can wipe out any size group of fleas. I do not know why Haberol Red is insisting on going for fleas. Fleas are not going to do them any good. I get for speed, but they're not going to do any good for anything else. Venom Red back. You have Recluse. Recluse is also good. But yeah, fleas will do nothing. As can be very plainly seen, they will all burn. Every one of them will burn to death, and there's nothing that can be done about it. Because Kodachis. Splash Fire is just that good. So yeah, I don't really expect to see the fleas finding much of anything to work with here other than, well, death. So Reckless is good idea, but we have the Ogres coming in as kind of a counter to, I suppose, a Venom Redback force that could theoretically have come up. Honestly, the Reckless is not a bad idea, all things considered. It's actually a good call for Heberdall Red. A little bit late, and they're not in a great position to easily re-expand, but at the very least, they aren't going to be completely destroyed by the Ogre coming in later. Like, it's a good call. The only downside, of course, is that they don't have much of an economy to build with. They have some reclaim. Great. That's good. I mean, they have all the dead Kodachis, and they have a bunch of dead fleas. That's 300 metal. But that's enough. That that can get them back into this match reasonably well. Although, the problem, of course, is going to be re-expanding. They have lost all of their weavers. They only have their commander to build and reclaim with, and they need to be building some an army just so that they don't die to another wave of, arm of forces coming in from Sack Roger, which is very well exactly what's going to happen. The Kodachi is coming in here, and the Reckless... Proving itself why it's a good choice to deal with his Kodachis. 
Not the most accurate unit, but it is dealing a huge amount of damage to the Kodachis, forcing them back, and as a result, that's giving Heberall Red room to play with. They can actually start building up. I still would like to see them build a Weaver sometime soon. Like, sooner rather than later. Build up as few Recluses as needed to survive. Build up a couple Weavers. Start sending the Weavers around to expand here. Expand around the back. I mean, it's Weavers. You're on a hilly area. You can go around the sides. You don't have to go through the front area. That's the one thing here. Sack Roger can only contain along this front area. But this is a spider factory. Heberall Red can go along the mountains, go along the cliffs. There's no problem. The fact that Sack Roger is expanding into this area is actually kind of silly. But again, Heberall Red could have expanded there. They could have expanded there a while ago. Because they are playing spiders. These are hills that matter nothing to them. Like, that's that's the key thing. Sack Roger's, like, Sack Roger's the only one actually bound to flat terrain. And I don't know if Heberall Red realizes this. Because I haven't seen them actually take advantage of the hills. I mean, the fleas went up the front. They didn't go around the side, around the back, and then just bypass the Kodachis entirely. Which, like, you know there's a containment Kodachi. Go around the sides. You don't, like, don't try to go through the flat ground where your opponent's strong. Go around the sides and mountains where your opponent can't do anything. But at any rate, Heberall Red is at least managing to break the contain somewhat. So, they have some mileage. They've had some value. I don't know how well this is going to work or how long this is going to work for, but... Hey, got a Kodachi! Got revenge! Actually, the Rexlers are doing a fine job here. This, is, this might be a bit of a problem for Sack Roger to push through, and they have enough of an economy to easily build a large army. It's not going to be a problem, ultimately. They're focused more on this fusion plan. But once that's done, there's nothing stopping them from just going ham on the attack factory. Just build everything. I mean, they, have, they have the entire map under their control. It's, this isn't really all that trivial. For, it's not that trivial for Heberall he he Red. They're able to take care of a few units here and there. Sack Roger, as soon as they actually start to fight back, it's going to be messy. What I really like to see Heberall Red do, ultimately, is go around the back and start dealing with these here, but that's not happening. The Ogres, the Ogres are making sure that doesn't happen. Well, the Reckless has tried. They did a pretty good job. Got rid of a few units, but they didn't get rid of this expansion over here. Didn't open anything up, really. Like I said, I think Heberall Red just doesn't really know how spiders work. Or at least it kind of feels that way. But, at any rate, this is... Still it. Also, Fuzzgug pointing out that they're not sure if they're point building Minotaurs compared to a bunch of Blitzes. I mean, that's a fair point. Blitzes, they deal less damage, like 180 damage, smaller range, lower damage, but still it's instant hit. And it's still reasonably quick. The DPS is still, still 67. Actually, 67 is not that high. Like, 3 second reload compared to the Minotaurs. The Minotaurs can pretty much just pound through just about anything. And bear in mind, this is... this. Three blitzes in a, is a cost of a minotaur. That's worth noting. Actually, three blitzes is more expensive than a minotaur. So I still think it's worth building minotaurs to an extent. They are slower, mind you, but if you know where you want to hit, then you can push a lot of damage into there. But yeah, to be fair, blitzes are still very strong, and they are still a very useful unit to work with. They just aren't the toughest unit in the world, and they are still kind of expensive for their damage. The main advantage, of course, is the paralysis, is the EMP. I can totally see that. And in this situation where you're dealing with a small number of units pushing in, it doesn't really matter what you go with. I mean, you're not dealing with armies in multiple sides of the map, so you don't have to worry so much about splitting weight of units. And you're not dealing with a bunch of units that are like a bunch of right units that are, make the blitzes have a hard time. So, again, not a huge deal. We are getting some fleas over to Sack Roger's expansion over in the north, but honestly, Sack Roger has so much on the map now. It's worth doing. It's good for Heberall Red to actually take this expansion and try to break what they can, and it's clear that they've... Okay, they do actually know how spiders work, and they do know how they work with the terrain. But the Weaver's not going over there. The Weaver's not building that up, or building up defenses, or whatever else. I mean, there is a counterattack coming in from Zack Roger, and Heberall Red should be aware of that, because Weavers, they do have a radar. So Heberall Red would know, hey, there's units coming in here. But at the same time... Like, the units go past bills and metal extractors, get something, anything. I mean, Sack Roger's so far ahead in the economy, I don't know how much it would matter, but it's at least something. Actually, the way Heberall Red's harassing around the map, this could be a bit of a punishment. It's just, to me, it's too little too late. I like the fact that Heberall Red is harassing. I don't like the fact that they keep harassing near the front lines. Like, go around the back. If you think your opponent has naked expansions, go around the back. Take those out. Don't worry about taking anything else. Just take out the backyard expansions, split up as best as possible, and hit all of them. Just queue up a bunch of orders to hit all the metal extractors. And then that's it. That's all you need. 
Because once you've done that, well, now your economy is not that far behind. Although, admittedly, it's been so long that Sack Roger has had this economic advantage. I'm not sure how well it would work. Also, for anyone using spiders, fight move. Fight move is your friend. Because fight move will cause the fleas to stay at max range. And the flea maximum range is larger than the explosion radius of the metal extractor. So they won't take damage as they're attacking it. If you move in, the fleas could very well end up right next to the metal extractor and you lose half of them. So, yeah, fight move in your fleas when attacking metal extractors. Otherwise, they will die to the metal extractor death. So, yeah, the mechs made cost. That's the metal extractors are making cost against fleas. That. Yeah, Wes, Wes is exactly right. Four fleas dying to a metal extractor. Metal extractor 75 metal. Four fleas is 80 metal. That metal extractor got value. So yeah, what we learned today is don't start in the corner of Hive Horse if you can help it, which you generally can. If you have to start in the corner, but you're playing something like Spiders or Cloakies or Shields, go around the back. Don't go around the front, especially if your opponent has units up the front that you can't deal with. And if you're going to harass your opponents with a wide range of units, or a wide number of units, do it faster. Do it quickly. And fight move with fleas. Always fight move with fleas into metal extractors. That way you don't lose them. I've actually never seen anyone use that. I've never seen anyone fight move fleas into metal extractors. It's just that the behavior of fight move is you will stay at max range. If you're if you're attacking a stationary target, it's a bunch of different behaviors. But attacking a stationary target, the behavior is max range. That way you don't lose the fleas. The metal extractor doesn't make cost when it dies. I mean, granted, there are okay suicide units that do make cost by dying, but metal extractors are generally not considered among their number. Not against fleas. Anyway, that is that. Next match is going to be a little bit more even. A little bit more interesting. Or probably will be. Stellas versus Athon on Obsidian. Again, two players I'm not familiar with. But I expect it'll be interesting just to see how all these newer players are handling the game. Because it seems like several of them have managed to figure out a lot of the way the game works. And that's great. I'm glad to see that there are new players that are getting into the game and getting decent at the game. So anyway, that's that's how it is, and we'll be back with that in a couple minutes. Steel Blue pointing out that Flea's... Where the Flea movement might be too fast for the AI to re realize that it's actually close enough before getting to the Metal Extractor Explosion Radius. This is the Metal Extractor Explosion Radius. It's, I think, like 100 Elmo or something. Fleas, on the other hand, have a range of 155 Elmo. So, roughly speaking, fleas have about one and a half to two times the range of the metal extractor explosion radius. So, even if it did take a frame or two for the AI to realize it, given the flea's speed, the flea sh most of the fleas should still be far enough away from the metal extractor they won't die, and they'll certainly be far enough away from the metal extractor they won't take the full brunt of the damage. Because, yeah, it's, it says 80, but that's a splash radius. We saw in the previous game that if you're on the edge of the radius, you can take, like, 10, 20 damage is not as big of a deal. I mean, yeah, the fleas will eventually get attrition from that, but it's probably not going to happen if you fight move, and even if it does, it won't happen to the point of being instant death for every single flea in the army, because they're right up close. Like, they're pushing their noses against the metal extractor before it dies and explodes. So yeah, anyway, Stellan versus Athon, or Stellus versus Athon on Obsidian is up next. Stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes.